The last story I've got for you today from Dr. Seuss isn't written by Dr. Seuss. It was written by Kate Klimo because Dr. Seuss was a great doodler. But this is a biography talking about the person um, behind all those illustrations and words that we've been reading. So it's a beautiful day in La Jolla, California, and a writer and artist is at work in his studio. The telephone rings. The reporter is calling with big news. The, the writer has won a big award for his books. It's a Pulitzer Prize, and the writer is Ted Geisel. He's also known as Dr. Seuss. Ted nearly falls off, off his chair. Is this a joke? Ted loves playing jokes and pranks, but he takes his work very seriously. Now, the world is doing so, too. Not bad for a lifelong doodler. Theodore Ted Seuss Geisel was born March 2, 1904, in Springfield, Massachusetts. His mother's name name was Henrietta Seuss Geisel, and she read to him and his big sister Marnie, and she also sang chants. She used to sell pies at her parents' shop. Now, he later said he got his love of wordplay and reading from his mother. Thanks to his father, Theodore, Ted became interested in machines. His father tinkered in his shop, making wacky inventions, and one of them was a machine that made arm muscles stronger. From an early age, Ted liked to doodle. He always had a pencil and a pad at hand. He had, near his house was a zoo, so lying in bed at night, he could hear the lions roaring and the elephants trumpeting. During the day, he would go there and he'd doodle pictures of animals. Marnie said his animals never looked quite like the real ones. Ted had a happy childhood until World War I broke out. The Geisels were German-American, and many Americans blamed the war on Germany. Kids bullied Ted. He wanted to prove he was a true American, so he joined the Boy Scouts and he sold war bonds. He was one of the top 10 bond sellers. Former President Theodore Roosevelt came to honor the 10 Scouts, but there was a mix-up and no medal for Ted. He was so embarrassed. Ever since that day, he had stage fright. After high school, Ted went to Dartmouth College. He worked on the humor magazine and he drew zany looking animals with zany names. And a, a bluff was a critter with an umbrella tail. And sometimes he signed his drawings with just his middle name, Seuss. Ted went on to study at Oxford University in England. He was bored by the long classes, so he doodled. A fellow American student saw him doodling. That's a very fine flying cow, said Helen Palmer. You ought to be an artist. Ted and Helen rode around together on a motorcycle. Ted wanted to marry Helen, but how would he earn a living? Back in Springfield, Ted drew tons of cartoons. He sent them to magazines signed Dr. Theophorestus Seuss in a magazine called the Saturday Evening Post, bought some of his cartoons. Ted also got a job at a different magazine. Now he could marry Helen and they moved into an apartment in New York City. He kept on doodling. Ted drew a clever cartoon about a bug spray called Flit. The bug spray company loved it and gave him more work, and he became an ad man. And as he did when he was a kid, he made up zany critters, this time for ads. Years later, zany fish like this would fill his book, McElliot's Pool. Ted wanted to do more with his doodling. A trip by Ocean Liner inspired him. The ship's engine droned D. Dum, dum, dee, dum, dum. And he started to write to the rhythm of the engine. He wrote a story about the crazy things a boy sees on his way to and from school. When he sent it around town, 27 publishers turned it down. Uh, he then ran into a friend who had just become a children's book editor. Mike McClintock loved the book. The title was, and I think I saw it on Mulberry Street. It was Dr. Seuss's very first book. Dr. Seuss went on to publish new children's book at a steady books at a steady rate for the rest of his life. Some of them won awards. Horton Hatches an Egg was a big hit in 1940. The story was silly, but it had a very deep message. People loved the elephant who said, I meant what I said and I said what I meant. An elephant's faithful, 100%. Ted did not publish a children's book during World War II. Lots of Americans wanted the United States to stay out of the war, but Ted wasn't one of them. He drew cartoons that poked fun at Hitler and Japan, and they urged America to fight for what was right. America finally entered the war. Ted joined the army. He worked with a team of filmmakers in Hollywood. They made funny training cartoons starring a soldier who couldn't do anything right. 
Army pals like Chuck Jones and P.D. Eastman would work with Ted in the years to come. After the war, Ted and Helen stayed in California. In 1947, Ted found an old, unused fire tower in La Jolla, and he and Helen fell in love with it. They bought the tower, and they made it their home. Ted's studio was in the tower. He kept a hat rack there filled with wacky hats, a fireman's hat from Ecuador, a Turkish fez, and admiral's hats from around the world. Sometimes, when he was having trouble with the story, he would put on a silly hat. Ted wanted each book to be perfect, so he wrote and rewrote, and he read aloud to Helen, and he sketched and he resketched, and he pinned his sketches to a corkboard. Now he worked until the words and the pictures were just right, and then he took his book to New York City. In his publisher's office, he would read it aloud, and workers would crowd around to listen to Ted's latest story. In 1955, Life magazine ran an article that said most early reading books were boring. The job of writing books for early readers should go to artists like Dr. Seuss and Walt Disney. Ted was dared to write a book using 225 simple words. He thought he could write the book in two weeks. It took him more than a year. The Cat in the Hat was published in 1957. The book sold like hotcakes. It changed the way children learned how to read. How the Grinch Stole Christmas also came out in 1957, and someone once said that the cat was Ted on a good day and the Grinch was Ted on a bad day. Ted felt like he was more, uh, the gruff, he was more like the gruff and grumpy character. His car's license plate even said, The Grinch. So eight years later, Ted worked with Chuck Jones to make an animated television special based on how the Grinch stole Christmas, and both the show and the book became Christmas classics. In 1958, Ted became president of Beginner Books. He would publish a line of easy-to-read books like The Cat in the Hat. The office was like a funhouse. Ted wrote some Ted wrote some of the readers. His wife Helen wrote some too. He hired friends to do others. Mike McClintock wrote A Fly Went By. P.D. Eastman wrote Go Dog Go. Ted published Stan and Jan Berenstein's first books about the Berenstein Bears. Everything Ted touched turned into a bestseller. Then, in 1967, a terrible thing happened. Helen died. Ted was lonely and lost. A year later, he married Audrey Stone Diamond. She had a good eye. She wanted Ted to use more color in his books. Ted's work became more colorful. Audrey came to live with Ted in the tower, and from there, he saw how much construction was taking place. Trees came down and buildings went up, so he started doodling about it, and he wrote The Lorax. It is the story of a little creature who speaks for the trees. He tries to save them from the greedy onceler. The story carried a powerful message about our environment. Another book with a powerful message was The Butter Battle Book. It tells about the Ukes and the Zooks and the two armies fighting over which side of their bread to butter. Now, the fight is silly, but their weapons are serious. Will deadly bombs be dropped? The story never says. Some people felt the book was too scary for children, but Ted knew that kids could handle it, and he felt his message about the madness of nuclear war was important. Ted was now world famous, and for some years he had been sick with cancer, but there was one more book he needed to write. It was a book of advice about life's ups and downs called All the Places You'll Go. So be sure when you step, step with care and great tact and remember that life's a great balancing act. And will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed. 98 and three quarter percent guaranteed. Kid, you'll move mountains. In a way, these were Ted's parting words. He died on September 24th, 1991. He left behind 44 books that have brought millions of children a great deal of joy. Now, every spring on Ted's birthday, people get together and they wear the striped cat hat and they celebrate the words, the pictures, and the spirit of Dr. Seuss, the great doodler. I've read you some of the stories, um, some of the last two we haven't talked about yet, the Lorax and all oh, the places you'll go. I'll try to read to you soon. So I hope this finds you well, and uh, I'll get back to the fractured fairy tales of the three little pigs in just a bit. All right, take care.